ladies were persevering with one mind in prayer with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Today we focus our attention to Maria Regina Apostolorum, Mary the mother and queen of all apostles. The Saturday after Ascension Thursday, so much so that it's a first-class feast here in this monastery of sisters. Why a first class? Well, because you sisters have very close to your heart the prayers for all priests. Through your prayers will depend upon the fervor of many a priest throughout the church. And what better time to pray for these priests on this day when the sacred scriptures guarantee us specifically and affirm today along these nine days until Pentecost, the mother of Jesus was praying with the first bishops of the church, the apostles, in the upper room right after the glorious ascension of her son. The Blessed Virgin has a great influence on the sanctification of priests through her prayers and through her countless merits. So much so that we believe that St. Thomas Aquinas has two sayings that we could agree with. First, he says, The dignity of the Blessed Virgin borders the infinite. It is so immense being the mother of God. And then he also says that Mary could not merit the incarnation of the Word, but by the grace of God, though that she received, she did merit, listen to this, that degree of sanctity which made her the worthy mother of God. So she collaborated with grace. It wasn't just that everything was given out to her by God and great abundance it was, but that she worked and she collaborated so that she can become that worthy mother of God. And so therefore her prayers, her acts of charity, go in helping out souls. And they are very, very powerful, her prayers, her intercession. And this is what is so appealing about today's feast, that the Blessed Virgin, she's in the upper room, earning the graces uh, for Christ's apostles. She's praying, and she is making an effort through the mystical body, even in this holy sacrifice of the Mass. And she's praying. St. Alfonso de Gori says that there was a, a Father Silvano Razzi, who narrated a story to just underline the importance of praying for priests to the Blessed Virgin. So once this devout cleric, he had great desires to see the Blessed Virgin. <laughs> so he kept praying, begging for a vision that Our Lady appeared to him. And so the Blessed Virgin sent him an angel to give them this message. If you are to see the Blessed Virgin with one, by one condition, that you will be blind for the rest of your life. Your eyes will be blind to this world. And so he says, oh yes, I'll take that challenge. <laughs> so, so then, after that was agreed upon, the Blessed Virgin appeared to him in all his splendor, but he had just had one eye open. So he had one eye closed, and he was watching the Blessed Virgin with one eye. And there he saw the great splendor of the Blessed Virgin. And when the Blessed Virgin uh, went back up into heaven, uh, the one eye was blinded. But he kept having this great desire, I want to see her again. I want to see her again. And then it, it came upon him in prayer that he would have to lose the vision of the other eye once he sees the Blessed Virgin. And so 
And so that's what happened. The Blessed Virgin appeared to him again. And so he was seeing this, this vision of the Blessed Virgin, expecting to lose vision in the second eye. But the Blessed Virgin wished him no harm being a priest of Jesus Christ, her son. And so she led his second eye alone and gave back to him the vision in his blinded eye. What a beautiful story that is. The Regina Apostolorum, the Queen of Apostles, will go beyond the eye for an eye in her dealings with priests. When it comes to her priests, she will go beyond the just limits. This is why, my dear sisters, you are to beg Our Lady for priests. The Blessed Virgin wants to do them so much good. But many of them, mark as well in your spiritual diaries, many priests have lost all supernatural faith. And they are causing great harm to the Church of Christ. And that's why the devil has them in there. They're all, many of them are ravenous wolves attacking the flock of Christ. And many of them are not that malicious. There are other bishops and priests that are afraid of their own shadows. And they remain silent, afraid of what their fellow bishops will say or their fellow priests will say. Many of them have committed grave scandals in the church. Priests and bishops have fallen into unspeakable vices and even into the sin of heresy. So many times, not even this aggressive violence, but rather the vast majority are in their own blindness and mediocrity. And this is why, my dear sisters, you have to pray that our Blessed Mother give them back vision to at least one eye if not both spiritual eyes, so as to see the, tr the true threats, the true dangers, and the true sacerdotal duties they have. A priest has absolutely no rights. He lost them all with his ordination. His only prerogative is to be hoisted up on the cross of Christ and shed his blood with him, be it a white martyrdom, or a, a red martyrdom for the Church of Christ. And so that's why so many priests, I'm sure Sister Superior's email is like, every day has like 70 messages <laughs> coming into the inbox, priests saying, please pray, please, please pray. I can imagine uh, Mother Abbess up there, she might have two email accounts, because if she just has one, it'll probably be uh, below a gasket or something. Uh, because so many priests ask the good sisters to pray and they need to be prayed for because the sanctity of the church and the conversion of the world depends on good priests. Remember, I'm paraphrasing uh, St. Jean Vianney. He says, if there are saintly priests, the people will be good. If there are good priests, the people will be mediocre. But if there are mediocre priests, God forbid, the verdict upon that lot of people. So as we continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us beg the Blessed Virgin as she continues her marathon of prayers in the middle of this novena until the coming of um, the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Sunday. Let us pray that the Blessed Virgin may grant abundant spiritual vision to those blind eyes of so many priests. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.